can you make a wood light like holster for the TLR7? Uh, why or why not? No. Okay, so for several reasons. One, the floodlight works because these two lights have a ton of surface area that you can grab onto, specifically the bezel of the light. The TLR7 is so small that we can't build a universal holster around it because there's really not enough to grab onto and stabilize the whole thing. The other problem is, uh, this is going to get kind of philosophical for a second. We look like a holster company, but we're not. That's a weird thing to say, I know. We are a concealment technology company. And what you'll notice is that we don't have a really wide variety of fits for our products. We don't have, you know, the Enigma Express for two dozen different guns. You know, there are holster companies out there that have like 3,000 SKUs in their catalog, right? And what you'll notice that they do all the time is that they'll make a holster and then they'll make it for everything and it never goes obsolete. And then if they want to invent something new, first of all, they're bogged down in making holsters for every single thing on the planet. And then to invent something new, they have to invent it and then support all those guns all over again. And that other thing never goes obsolete. And then before you know it, you've got 3,000 SKUs in your catalog, multiple products that kind of compete with each other inside your own ecosystem. And then when you need to revise anything or make an advancement, you have to change all 3,000 of those SKUs. And we are way more interested in developing new technologies frequently and at a high iteration rate which means that we're not going to have this huge battleship, this huge aircraft carrier full of SKUs that we need to figure out how to turn on a dime every time we come out with a new innovation. So we focus on bringing new concealment technologies to the world, and then we offer them for a limited number of things. The TLR7 not only doesn't have enough surface area to make this floodlight universal approach work. The other issue is that there's the TLR7A and then there's the TLR7 subs. And there's a ton of variation in that. There's a different sub for the uh, P365 than there is for the Glock 48. And there's variations within the TLR7A family. In order to make a, TL, uh, a holster like this that fits the TLR7, we would have to make it fit three lights and five guns right off the bat, which means that this project, the project of injection molding a ComfortScape holster for even the top three most popular guns with a TLR7 turns into like a $175,000 to $200,000 project, of which we will get almost none of that money back based on the overall popularity of the TLR7. And then on top of it, Companies like Streamlight iterate lights like the TLR7 constantly. The advancement potential in the small body light area is so huge that by the time we get this project done for the TLR7, they'll have come out with a TLR14 that has you know a few more lumens and a different body shape that we can't work with. And then everyone who has a TLR7 will scrap that and get the 14 or the 19 or however many TLRs they have. And we'll be behind the curve and out the money. The X300 and the TLR1 externally haven't changed in 10 years. On the outside, they're the same light because their form factor is such that all they need to do is change the internals to dramatically increase uh, candela and lumens and battery life. And so this is a stable product around which we can build uh, technologies to support. So stuff like the TLR7 just doesn't, doesn't fit into this world for us, unfortunately. Hi, I'm John from Filster, and today we are doing some Q&A. Hi, I'm John from Filster, and today we are answering we. It's me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 100% outtakes. Yep, all outtakes.